How many calories do you need to lose weight? That's what we're gonna be covering in today's video, which is a follow-up of last week's video, so make sure to check that out first if you haven't already. To quickly recap, energy balance is the main variable influencing whether you gain or lose weight. In order to achieve weight loss, you need to consume less energy, aka calories, than your body expense. Therefore, to determine how many calories you should consume, you first need to identify your total daily energy expenditure, or TDEE, which is simply how much energy you use in any given day. Your total daily energy expenditure is influenced by four major variables, which include the following. One, your basal metabolic rate, or BMR, which is the amount of energy required to sustain basic organ function, body temperature, and keep you alive. Your BMR is the largest component of your total daily energy expenditure, accounting for approximately 60%. Two, non-exercise activity thermogenesis. This is the amount of energy used to do any sort of activity outside of intentional exercises. This includes the energy required for you to walk around, sit up straight, blink, and even to interpret what you're hearing when you're watching this video. Three, exercise activity thermogenesis, EAT. This is simply the amount of energy used during intentional physical activity. And four, the thermic effect of food, or TEF. This is the amount of energy required in order to digest and absorb food. Although foods contain energy, the process of digestion and absorption requires some energy in order to break down the nutrients and actually obtain that energy from the food. Any energy that your body uses can be categorized into one of these four variables. Rather than trying to figure out the value of these variables independently, predictive equations can be used to estimate BMR, which can then be used to estimate your total daily energy expenditure. We're gonna discuss how to estimate your BMR in just a second, but if you're enjoying this video, I made a completely free ebook covering these topics. Make sure to download it if you wanna learn more. The link is gonna be in the description of this video. Also, if you wouldn't mind, tap the like button and subscribe to my channel. That way, you'll be notified whenever I publish a new video and you'll help my channel grow in the meantime, which I really appreciate. Okay, so how do you determine your basal metabolic rate? The only way to measure BMR directly is using a method called direct calorimetry, which measures how much energy or heat your body releases over a period of time. Since most people don't have access to these kinds of equipment, equations using anthropometric variables such as your age, your weight, and your height have been developed to estimate your BMR. My favorite equation to use is the Mueller equation, which you can see on the screen right here. Don't worry about memorizing this equation. There's a bunch of great BMR estimators online. I'll link one of my favorites by NASM in the description of this video for you to use. You can simply just plug in all of the variables into the calculator and it will tell you your BMR. Using myself as an example, I'm a 220 pound 28 year old male and I am six foot five inches tall. My estimated BMR is around 2000 calories per day. Now that we have estimated our BMR, we can use it to estimate our total daily energy expenditure. As previously mentioned, your BMR is simply the number of calories your body burns at rest to keep you alive. Unless you don't move at all and don't eat anything, you need to consume more calories than your BMR to maintain your body weight. Determining your maintenance calories is actually quite simple. After you calculate your estimated BMR, you simply multiply it by an activity factor that's appropriate for your current level of physical activity. On the screen, you'll see an image of the five activity factors that we use. On the very low end, we have an activity factor of 1.2, which is for somebody who is completely sedentary. On the high end, we have an activity factor of 1.9 for someone who is extremely active, such as a professional athlete. Okay, let's have an example of somebody who lifts weights two times per week and runs twice per week for 30 minutes, yet has a very sedentary job. They'd likely be considered lightly active. In order to calculate their maintenance calories, you'd simply multiply their BMR by 1.375 since that is the corresponding activity factor for somebody who is lightly active. Using myself as an example again, if I decided that I was lightly active, I would multiply my estimated BMR of 2000 by 1.375, which equates to 2750 calories. Again, this is simply an estimation of how many calories I need to eat in a given day to maintain my weight given my current level of physical activity. Keep in mind that if you decide to increase your level of physical activity as part of your weight loss plan, you'll also be increasing your energy expenditure. If you think your physical activity falls between two of these activity factors, just pick the value in between both. For example, if you think you fall between lightly active and moderately active, you can simply choose an activity factor between 1.375 and 1.55. Next, we need to determine 
determine an appropriate number of calories for your goal. After determining your maintenance calorie target, you need to adjust it by either increasing it or decreasing it depending on whether you're trying to gain or lose weight. The degree to which you adjust your caloric intake should be dependent on your expected rate of progress. Below are some examples of the adjustments that I think are appropriate for gaining and losing weight. For weight loss at a slow, moderate, or fast pace, I recommend decreasing your maintenance calories by 10, 15, or 20% respectively. For weight gain at a slow, moderate, or fast pace, I recommend increasing your calories by 5, 10, or 15% respectively. If your goal is weight loss, you may feel tempted to select fast weight loss and decrease your maintenance calories by 20%. That is certainly not appropriate for everyone. Keep in mind that faster weight loss may make it more difficult to adhere to your diet and you'll likely feel hungrier, less energized, and pretty grumpy throughout the day. I recommend that most people begin with a moderate approach and decrease their maintenance calories by about 15%. For weight gain, I would recommend most people to follow a slow to moderate approach since faster weight gain doesn't necessarily mean more muscle gain. Using myself as an example again, if I were to attempt moderate weight loss, I would decrease my maintenance calories by 15%. Given that my estimated maintenance is 2,750 calories per day, I would consume approximately 2,300 calories per day in order to achieve weight loss at a moderate rate. Keep in mind, the numbers generated from these equations are simply predictions and are not exact by any means. Your actual maintenance requirements may slightly deviate from what you calculate, which will require you to make changes to your plan in order to find out your actual requirements. However, these equations provide a quick estimation and are simply just a place to start tracking. The most accurate way to determine your maintenance calories is to simply track your calories for two to three weeks and see if your weight remains stable. If it is, then you can rest assured that your caloric intake is pretty close to your maintenance calories. After determining an appropriate caloric intake for yourself, you simply need to track your weight and caloric intake over time. Make sure to track weekly or bi-weekly body weight averages rather than daily averages since our body weight can easily fluctuate from day to day. If you're losing anywhere between 0.4 to 0.8% of your total body weight per week, you're in a good place. You'll have to tailor your caloric intake as you start to lose weight since your energy expenditure will decrease as a result. Remember, body weight is a major determinant of your BMR, which is a major determinant of your total daily energy expenditure. Therefore, if you lose weight, you need to decrease calories accordingly to achieve weight loss at a similar rate. Typically, decreasing your caloric intake by an additional 150 calories per day should do the trick. If you've watched this far, thank you for sticking around. Let me know if you guys have any comments in the questions below or if anything wasn't clear enough and I'll make sure to address them. Catch you guys in next week's video and thank you for sticking around.